All right, to Emily's point, though, Republicans still want to get a vote out here of committee uh, by maybe Friday and maybe a full Senate vote by Tuesday. Is that possible now in light of these new allegations when you have the likes of Chuck Schumer and Michael Blumenthal and some of these others saying, you know what, uh, everything should be put on hold, just cool, cool things down here. Uh, Chuck Schumer going so far as say maybe the judge should consider stepping down. It, it, it's gotten into the crazy territory here. Josh Holmes is a former Mitch McConnell chief of staff. And Josh, the senator has made it very clear, uh, at least as things stood yesterday, that the vote goes on. And, and the vote will go on out of committee, presumably Friday. The clock ticks to get a Tuesday full Senate vote. Is that doable? Yeah, I think it is. And, I, you know, I think it's really important to remind your viewers, Neil, about why this process is just so bizarre. And, and we've just gotten into the land of despicable. But the kind of allegations that have been brought up here in the last 10 days, there is a process for. And, in fact, the Judiciary Committee and all committees that have the, the advice and consent form within the Senate have a process that they deal with these kind of things. And, and, and really, there's two purposes for it. One is to protect the victim, the alleged victim in this case, their identity should be pr protected by having a private hearing and basically fleshing out these facts ahead of time so that they are not subjected to the kind of political scrutiny that we've seen so far. And the second is to protect the integrity of the nominee. If, in fact, they get to the bottom of all of this and find out that there's no there there, you haven't inextricably smeared the nominee beyond repair. And I think what you've seen from Senate Democrats by sitting on these allegations until the hearings are over, it's an intentional move to try to smear the character of, of Brett Kavanaugh beyond any kind of repair uh, and a short timetable to try to kill this nomination. And so, you know, this is, this is really the land of the, of the bazaar at this point. You know, I've, I've tried to read what I can of this latest accusation of this Julie Swetnick or her lawyer, Michael Avenetti, says everything is corroborated. That was the same argument used with earlier uh, Deborah Ramirez, who had argued about um, what happened in college when she and the judge were at Yale together, uh, but failing to remember key points. So that really wasn't corroborated. Christian Blasey Ford had made the argument that much of her accusations have been corroborated. I might be missing something, but corroboration means uh, unequivocal uh, confirmation from outside parties who could verify what you're saying. And in not any of these cases is that the case. So why are we here at this point where a judge could be on the brink of, of having to step down? Yeah, you know, if you look at the just the facts, right, take the veracity of the claims aside by the women and whether or not these events, um, in fact, took place. Let's just say, let's just set that aside. Here are the facts that we know. The four people who the alleged victim, Dr. Ford, has put forth to the committee to say that they can corroborate what happened to her that night at the hands of Judge Kavanaugh, all four have submitted testimony to the Judiciary Committee under penalty of felony, saying they have absolutely no memory of it. One of them, uh, a woman who she was close friends with, said she has no memory of even meeting Judge Kavanaugh. And so now we're in a, in a situation where you basically got uh, a, a, an explosive allegation with no facts that, that gird underneath any of this for senators to consider on a timetable that is just completely ridiculous. We've turned this thing into a complete circus. Well, they're going to turn it around just to say, that, well, the timetable is too aggressive. Then we have to spread the timetable out and we have to get to, and I'm sure that might be the read of, you know, some of the senators are on the fence, Lisa Murkowski, maybe Susan Collins, possibly Jeff Flake, who will say we need to hear more, hear more from these women, which means we need more time. How realistic is that? And your old boss, Mitch McConnell, what would he do? Well, so there's, there's two pieces to this. One is it's important to get under the hood and look at what some of the liberal activist groups are trying to do here. They're trying to use these allegations as an opportunity to push this nomination to the point that's beyond the elections, that perhaps they can win the elections, perhaps they can retake the Senate, and perhaps they can deny President Trump the pick altogether. Now, you saw uh, yesterday in the New York Times report the guy who's actually leading, his former Hillary operative, who's leading the opposition to Judge Kavanaugh, said it. He said, what we'd like to do is beat back this nomination, win back the Senate, and then deny the nomination altogether. And so the point is the timetable matters here because it allows Republicans to fill this seat. And Judge Kavanaugh has had a longer time that he has been considered than any of President Obama's picks up to this point. And there's been plenty of time to process all of this, but they've chosen to do this in the most political 
uh, dynam just dynamite way at the end to try to explode the entire process and, and, and smear Judge Kavanaugh. And it's a really unfortunate thing, not only for Judge Kavanaugh, but for the alleged victims in the case.